live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering UiPath Forward Americas. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back to Miami, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We got all the action going on behind us. We are seeing the ascendancy of robotic process automation, software robots, one of the leaders in that industry, one of the innovators, Daniel Dinez is here. He's the founder and CEO of UiPath. Hot off the keynote. Daniel, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for inviting me. You're very great welcome. Pleasure. So, the great setup here. The Fontainebleau in Miami is a, an awesome venue for a, a, a conference this size, about 1,500 people. In your keynote, you talked about your vision, and we want to get into that, but go back to why you started UiPath. I started UiPath to have joy at work, <laughs> to do what I like, and to build something big. And you're a developer, right? I mean, you, I'm you a code. software engineer. I, mean, I can tell by the way you dress. <laughs> 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 developer CEO. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, but you have a vision. You, you talked about a, a robot for every person. Yeah. You mentioned Bill Gates, a PC uh, yeah. for every person. I said a chicken for every pot, Harry Truman. <laughs> what is that vision? Tell us about it. Well, in our daily work, we do a lot of manial stuff, repetitive, boring stuff. It's, that is not human, it's not human-like. Why not having this robot that we can talk to, we can command, and just do the boring stuff for, for us? I think it's no-brainer. Right. We just didn't think it's possible. It's, we showed with our technology this is possible, actually. This is an angle of automation that people didn't think it was possible before. Well, um, so I, I ne neglected to congratulate you on your early success. I mean, you said one of your tenets is you're humble. So you got a lot of work to do, we understand that. But you've raised over $400 million to date. You just had a giant raise. We had Carl Eschenbach on in our Palo Alto studios. He was, he was one of the guys in the round. So that's confirmation that this is a big market. We've pegged it at around a billion dollars today, 10X growth by 2023. So very impressive uh, uh, growth potential. What's driving that growth? It's all from the customers. When they see it working, it's a wow. It's, it's different. They won't go back to the, to the same way of delivering work. It's changing how people really work. You see people becoming joyful when we show them the robot and they say, I don't need to do this stuff anymore, wow. Imagine people doing the same reports every day, going through hundreds of pages, clicking the same. This is, this is Nirvana. And we saw customers, United Health was on stage today. Mr. Yamamoto has a thousand robots. Uh, Wells Fargo's up there, he had some partners. So you're doing that hard integration work as well. Stu, you noted uh, that the global presence of this company was impressing you. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, the company started in Romania. We had, you know, you don't see too many American keynotes where there's a video up there in a foreign language. It's Japanese with English subtitles. Uh, you've got customers already starting with a global footprint. Uh, what, what, what's it like being a star, you know, a, a founder in a startup uh, from, from Europe playing in a global marketplace? Well, actually it helped us to become, we've been born global. We are one of the first startups born global from day one. We've built this company with Japanese talent, Indian talent, Romanian talent, American talent, and being from this remote part of Europe help us think big. Because we, yeah, we cannot build this startup only with Romanians. That's clear, we don't have the pool of talent. So why not just go in global, get the best talent we can and spread global. And we are one of the few companies in the world that has the revenue split equally across the three big continents. Yeah, Daniel, the other thing that struck me, you're, you're growing the company very fast. We talked about the money, but you said you're going to have over 4,000 employees by 2019. You know, I play a lot in the open source world, it's often small team, you've got a go marketplace. 
How come you need so many employees for a software company? Maybe explain a little bit that relationship with the customer, how much you, your, your technical people, what they need to do to interact and help them to grow these. Is it verticals? You know, what, what, what's that dynamic? Well, first of all, we hired more than 1,000 people in last year alone. We started from 200 and now we are 1,400. We need all these people because this technology is at the, inter at the intersection of software and services. We need to help our customers scale. And we need to inject a lot of customer success people making our customer successful. My, my way of building a company is customer first. We, we want to offer this boutique type of uh, approach to our customers and they are happy and they and we build this trust relationship this is why we need so many we have 2000 customers next year we have 5000 customers we need we need our people to help them grow we're going to have Craig Leclerc on a little later he's the vice president of Forrester Research they've done a deep dive in this marketplace in the last couple of years now UiPath has jumped from number 3 to number 1 in the Forrester wave and when you look at that report, really the feature and function analysis shows you guys lead in a number of places. In listening to your keynote, I discerned several things that I wonder if you could explain for our audience. It sounds like computer vision is a key linchpin to your architecture. And there seems to be an orchestrator and then maybe a studio to enable simple, low code or even no code yeah. uh, automations yeah. to be developed. Can, can you describe to a layperson your architecture and why you've been able to jump into the lead? Well, we've done everything wrong as a startup. We spent like seven years building a computer vision technology that it was of little use back then. We did it just because we like it. And now this is our powerful weapon. Because what's important for this robot is to be accurate and to be able to work in any situations. Why our technology works better is that we do way better the extra mile of automation. 80% of the job anyone can do, even with free software. But the last 20% is where the real issues is. And with the last 20% there is no automation. And we are doing way faster. So our secret sauce is the fact that we've done something against lean, against every principle in startup. We had the luxury building so many years technology without even envisioning the use. But when we found the market, and it was a great product market fit, then we scaled the company. There are a couple of key statistics that I want to bring up and get your thoughts on. We know that there are now more jobs than there are people to fill those jobs. Yeah. We also know that the productivity hasn't been increasing. So your vision is to really close that gap through RPA and automation. So your narrative is really that you're not replacing humans, you're augmenting humans. But at the same time, there's got to be some training involved. You guys are making a huge commitment in training. You're going to train a million people, that's the goal. Within three years, we have Tom Clancy on next. We're going to ask him how he's going to do that. But talk about that skills gap and how you're embracing retraining. Well, we realized at some point that change management, it's, it's kind of the key, it's the cornerstone of delivering this technology. Because there is inertia, there is, there is fear. In the, if we bring at the same time, automation and training, that solves this, that solves this issue. And we, we have to think big. This is why, one million is a big one. But we will achieve it, because we, I learned my way to think big. I, I, I was thinking small for so many years, and thinking big, it's like, it's like liberty. You suddenly realize, yes, you can. Daniel, we talk a lot about digital transformation. The automation often doesn't get talked, but you know, big companies, Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, seems a natural fit. I saw some of them are your partners. You came from yeah. Microsoft. Maybe talk about the dynamic about how some of the you know, big players that 
you know, have the business process applications, how, how, how your solution fits with them, you know, are, are they going to be you know, paying attention to this space? Well, digital transformation, it's a big initiative for everybody. And RBA, it's actually right now recognized as the first step in digital transformation. And obviously that involves RPA, AI, big business applications. It's not, it's not one single angle. But we covered the last mile of automation. We covered the impossible before, before this. And our automation first view of the world is beyond digital transformation because companies will exist after they build through digital transformation. But automation first is a, is a mindset. It's, it's rethinking your operations by applying automation first. You have an open mindset, which is interesting. You even said on stage that look, our competitors are beginning to mimic some of our features and functions in our approach, and you said that's okay. Um, I was surprised by that, especially given your Microsoft background, which was like grind competitors into the ground. What's changed? Why the open mindset and why do you believe that's the right approach? But look at Microsoft. Microsoft has changed. This is the, it's much better. It's, you feel better as a human. When you can offer something, this is up, take it. Give me feedback. We've been able to build way faster than them, having our open and free community, open the software. It gives you more joy as a developer seeing thousands of people than just guarding my little secret, just the fear someone will copy it. It's way better. Right? Now, you said on stage that a lot of people laughed at you when you were starting this company, you dream big. Somebody once said, Stu, that if you believe you can do it or you don't believe you can do it, you're right. So you got to believe, was one of the things that you said. That's the first thing. Yeah, so share with the young people out here who, who are dreaming big, everybody in their early 20s, they're dreaming big. Tell us about your story, your dreams. People laughed at you, what were they laughing about and how did you power through that? Where did you get your conviction? Well, first of all, they don't dream big enough. It's very difficult to be big enough because you have your, you know, it's the common sense that comes into the picture. And it's the fear of uh, other people laughing at you. And we haven't dreamt big enough for 10, for the first 10 years, we just wanted to make a good technology, the best technology that we can. But that's not big enough. Big enough is change the world. Big enough is bring something that makes people life better. This is big enough. If they think making people lives better, that's big enough. Nothing else is big enough. <laughs> well, I love the fact, Daniel, that you're mission driven. That's clear. You're having some fun. You know, this, <laughs> these apps are really a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you still code? <laughs> no, but I do a lot of software design and review. Okay, so you help so yeah. the coders say, how, how did, what's that dynamic like? You have obviously experienced developer. Do you sort of tell them which path to go down or which path not to go down? Uh, do you challenge them? What's your style as a leader? I challenge them to do things faster, always. They, I ask them, let's do this, let's do this feature. And they say two months, no, two days. Why not? And then we go and break down and it's a lot of conversation, but usually we, we will deliver. Fast, fast is also a way of being. Fastest company wins. And fast is, it's, it's not easy to change the mind. Because you, you want, maybe you want to be very organized, very sophisticated. If you are fast, you have to be, you have to be ready to make mistakes, reverse your decision going, but you will go fast in the end. So that, that is kind of Steve Jobs-like, set a really challenging goal and, and people somehow will figure it out, but culturally, you seem friendlier, nicer. It's not grinding people anymore, it's inspiring them. Our, is that a fair assessment? My goal is to have the happiest employees everywhere. Hep I like to be happy. I started this company for the joy of doing what I like. Why not? This is, this is, this is what I want for everyone. And we, are, we, we recently scored in uh, comparably as one of the best company in terms of people happiness. Well, congratulations. Thanks so much for coming Thank on the Thank you very much for really inviting me. Pleasure having you.
All right, Thank Stu and so I will much. be back with our next guest. Right after this short break, we're live from UiPath at, uh, at the, at, in Miami. You're watching theCUBE, stay right there. Thank <laughs> you.